not hold you the veil tore before you silence the boast of sin and grace heavens of glory the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus.
when we leave this place as we do when we are here may we do it with everybody we meet on the street even if they don't receive us but Lord Lord you promised you promised that if we believe Lord let us be available let us be available Holy Spirit work through us today work through us every day in Jesus name Didn't the Bible say something about crashing cymbals? Hmm? I don't know, but I like it. Didn't the Bible say something about crashing cymbals? Doesn't the Bible say something about making a joyful noise? Hey, don't blame me. I read it in the book. Ah. Okay. It's in the book. We're people of the book, right? Well, you know, Pastor Eddy, sometimes you make me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not interested in making anybody uncomfortable. But I'm very interested in being obedient to the book. Right? Crashing symbols, I mean, my goodness. How long are you going to do that, Eddie? Don't worry, I'm done. I'm done for now. God help me. Crashing cymbals. Make a joyful noise. Trust me, I'd rather somebody else do it, but then again, I do enjoy. I, I, yeah, that's true. I, whoops, I just told a fib, didn't I? Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, Pastor Eddie, I'm feeling kind of weak spiritually. Huh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Maybe it's time to get happy in Jesus. I don't know. Try it out. Here, pick my symbol. Beat on this for a while. Let this be your hallelujah. Yet let this be your let this be your rejoicing in the Lord. Hit that symbol. Let it be your cry, your anthem. Let that be your voice. You know, aren't you glad that God doesn't only understand intellectual speech? I think if God only understood intellectual speech, our conversations would be rather short. Oh, but God yearns for the cry of our heart.
So if you like, I have a symbol and I got a stick. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Amen? Well, I'm pretty eager to get into the message. The question for today is Jesus asking, do you want to be made well? It's not meant to be a trick question. And it's not meant to be a unuseful question. It's a very useful question. It's one of those questions that need to go along in the journey. Right? It's, not, it's not meant to be answered right away. It's meant to come up again and again and again and again. again. Do you want to be made well? And what's amazing about Jesus is, think about what Jesus has authority over. Well, think about how he's changed your heart and my heart. Think about how we've experienced his joy and his peace and have partaken of his spirit. And so when Jesus says, do you want to made, be made well, that covers a whole bunch. You know, if I called a plumber and he said, do, well, do you, want, you want to be made well, I know he's talking about the pipes. And if I called the carpenter and he said, well, you want to be made well, you want things fixed around here, and I know he's talking about something to do with wood. But when God of the universe says, do you want to be made well? We're not talking about pipes and wood. We're talking about everything that he has authority over. So we're going to talk about that this Sunday. Sarah, come on up and give us an update. Can you give Sarah a nice hand? <laughs> and Sarah is going to give us an update on children's ministry. And here you go, sister. I'm going to sit. <laughs> here you go, sit. Have so a good I'm time. really Enjoy excited yourself. about what? Where are you going? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, I won't leave you alone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't start. I'm really excited about, is it on? Hello? Yeah, Hello? On. Okay. I'm really excited about children's ministry. If you haven't been up to the preschool room, go take a look. I put up, I don't know what to call it, a poster? A, a, anyway, it's a picture of the ocean with sea creatures, and I'm very excited. It looks, that room was really stark, and I'm, I just, I'm really excited about the way it looks now. You've done a great job. <sighs> well, Thank you. Um, we've got the Sunday school office organized and everything's labeled. And if you, you know, teachers, if you need anything, just let me know. So the unfortunate thing is we've lost some teachers. And we right now do not have a preschool teacher. So Colleen has very graciously accepted the preschoolers in with her class. And that goes through from June 18th to July 16th. Then the next round uh, is starts on August 6th and goes through August 27th. We also do not have a teacher for preschool or the older kids, the primary. Um, the beginners are solid. We got, we got teachers for them, no problem. Um, so maybe this is why I come in. This is where you come in. Thank you. So Sarah came to me and said, Pastor Eddie, what do we do? Do we start canceling classes? And if you know anything about me, my answer was absolutely positively not. Because these classes represent our future. And if we're not committed to our future, oh, Pastor Eddie's going to get a little bit mean. <laughs> but if we're not committed to our future, what are we doing here? Is this just about our good time experience, or is this about the renown of Christ continuing through Grace Fellowship Church? So I said, absolutely not. Dear ones, this is the easiest thing you could ever do. 
it is teaching basically two months out of the year. And if you look around, we don't have a lot of kids. So if there's no children in the classroom, guess what you get to do? You get to come back. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> we pray, and then you get to come back. Thank you, Lord. This is the easiest thing we can do. Basically, what we're asking you to do is to run a fire drill in case the fire happens, we know what to do. This is a children's ministry drill. But we're doing it as a way of saying, Lord, we want children. We want families. You see, we're going to talk today about how actions speak louder than words. And if we want Jesus to heal something in our lives, there is a action that's connected to what he wants to do. We'll talk about that in scripture. Dear ones, I will not cancel the class. And so um, if that means that we don't have teachers and we send kids to a classroom that doesn't have a teacher, well, maybe at that point we'll realize we have to take this serious. Okay, so God bless you. We have had such a wonderful response with this. Hear my heart. We've had a wonderful response with this, but we've got to keep it up. And that's the hard part, isn't it? We cannot grow weary. I'm going to give you a little Bible. We cannot grow weary in well-doing. We've got to remain faithful. I believe this is the call of God. I think that we are beginning to see children come this is not the time for us to close down classrooms. Amen? Amen. So, do we want to have families? Do we want to have children? Well, there is an action connected to that. My goodness, that's going to fit right into my sermon today. Okay, God bless you real good. Please talk to Sarah. Trust me, we will walk with you as closely as possible We'll teach you. It's easy. It's wonderful. It's fulfilling. And if we don't have kids, you pray and you come back. Okay? Please come talk to me. I have a wide variety of experience. I've been in the church my whole life. If you're a little shy about teaching children, please come talk to me, and I'll show you how easy it is. If you need encouragement, you need advice, you need anything, I am at your disposal. So if you need my phone number, my email, let me know. Amen. I think, I think we hit the nail on the head, didn't we? Okay. Um, a couple other things. Let's see. So Tuesday, oh, this week. Gosh, Roz, help me here, dear one. I am just, I'm so someplace else right now. No, don't help me. I'll figure it out. Okay, so this week is men's prayer, yes. Okay, so the week of the 9th through the 15th, that is this coming week. Thank you, Lord. This is our week of prayer and fasting, right? So we, once a quarter, we devote a week to prayer and fasting. And then this week will culminate in a Sunday evening service where we have a night of worship and prayer. So we're asking you to find something to fast this week, whether it be food or drink or television or your screens or whatever it is. Find something that you can say no to as a way of saying yes to the Lord. Pray and ask God, God, what is it that I need to set aside? And then spend that time and spend that energy in drawing close to you, right? So there's an emphasis on prayer this week. And so I ask that you take that serious. And then next Sunday night again, it will culminate in a night of worship and prayer. Okay? Um, this Tuesday, starting at 5.30, we are part of the Washington Jefferson Neighborhood Picnic that happens in Monroe Park, and so you'll see some um, description there. Please come to that. It's a wonderful time for us to just uh, struggle with getting to know our neighbors a little bit, right? And the best, the best way to have conversations sometimes is just to ask questions. Hi, who are you? My name is... Where do you live? How do you connect with all this, right? So let's, um, we are donating tables and chairs, and we love doing that for that community gathering. And then one hope on the same week is our 24-hour day of prayer. And so 
we pray with other churches in Lane County and collectively every day of the year is prayed for. Okay, and so our day is coming up this Wednesday. So if you need to be reminded of the hours of prayer that you signed up for, the bulletin board is there on the wall as you're walking toward the fellowship hall. Okay. Oh, Dorothy and Hunt, Dorothy and Warren Hunter, we have their um, memorial service coming up. Pray for Janice and the family. Already? I think that pretty much does it. Am I missing anything? Okay. All right, why don't we stand, get ready to meet and greet one another. Let's stand and get ready to do our offering. And um, teachers, um, do we need to hold up lollipops? How are we doing? Pauline is back there, and she's got the little ones. And then the big ones, who's got the big ones? My dear Laura, my goodness, that's always a fun class. All right, let's say a prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for your love and your, your blessing and your presence. And, Lord, we ask that you would um, um, give us, Father, uh, ears to hear all that you're saying to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we uh, greet one another, share the love and the peace of Christ. Hey, buddy. something, didn't you? Don't be steady. I have much bags for that. That's why they bring up the kids for tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm leaving this phone call. Yeah, you're in. Trying to leave. Oh, we're going to whatever. How long is the lease for? I don't know, but it could be a long term. So what do they want? I'm still here. What's on? I'm going to take my lunch. You're going to have some sleepovers? Some heavy? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, James. Have you gotten one of these, buddy? Yes, I have. You I'm have? Me one. This guy needs Is one, Ross? Yes. Oh. Ross, welcome. Here's a snack and a card. Awesome. If you'd like thank to give you. us your information, go ahead and put the card in the offering plate. All right. Good thank to you. have you. Good. Good to be here. Hello, Emily. Michelle. Yeah. She sends me videos. Or oh. She has one good hand now. I think we've met before, but it's been a while. My sweetheart. She comes every Sunday night. Oh. Good to have you. Welcome. There's candy and there's a card there. Give us your information. I'll give you a call this week. And put the card in the offering plate. Okay? Oh, I'm glad. What are you doing? Have you ever gotten one of our candies? No. This is for new people, but if you've never gotten one, I love giving them away. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, Marilyn. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh. So, uh, hello, sir. My name's Eddie. Here is a, a little gift for coming. Is this guy correctly? No, um, that's that silver plate back there. But if you like, pull out the card, give us your information if you like, put it in the offering, I'll give you a call this week. Okay, my name is Rick. Rick, I'm Eddie. Hey, yeah. God bless you, Eddie. Hello, Miss Jenny. I'm good. Can I get everybody? Occasionally, when you need to help move stuff around, James will fix it. You said you moved the table from here. Oh, no, they, the rental place drops them off here, and they just come pick them up. It's oh, really easy. Well, I'm saying, do we need, you need help planning tables for us when we have them? No? No. Yeah, they come, they pick up the yeah. tables and chairs, and right. they bring them to the park, and then they well, actually... Well, who's furnishing the booth? Um, read the thing. I think, I think it's a potluck. Oh, it's a potluck. Okay. No, no, no. I take it back. Um, That's Eugene Emeralds is paying for food. Oh, I think really? they I think oh, they hired oh, a food oh, truck to come in. Oh, it's a baseball So game. it's all free. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I 
this guy the same place I met this guy. At Samaritan? Samaritan yeah. Regional Medical Center. Really? James was a patient. Wow. And you were part of kitchen staff. Okay. Yeah. Right. I didn't know that. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, I think that's all of them. Okay. I think I can. Thank you. Roz? If you want to give less, you're going to have to give more than that. I know. And so are you. Okay. Oh, blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. Here below, praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. God, you are generous to us. God, may we freely give as we have received. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to Ezekiel chapter 37. For you Bible scholars, that's the Old Testament. So there was a... Uh, there was a, uh, a granddaughter who became very concerned about her grandfather because he was driving on a highway and she just saw the news that, that there was a driver on that same highway going the opposite direction. It was a one-way, of course, being a highway. So she called him and she said, Grandpa, you got to be careful. I just saw the news and there's a, there's a man driving in the wrong direction on the highway. And the grandfather said, honey, it's not just one man, there's hundreds of them. <laughs> Guess who's going in the wrong direction? Okay, I got another one for you. Um, an evangel uh, evangelical preacher and a politician go to heaven and St. Peter's showing them the new the new digs, and he says to the evangelical preacher, see this room with this cot and this chair and this desk? That's for you. So the politician thinks, my goodness, what am I going to get? And St. Peter says, you see this mansion with the beautifully manicured grounds and all the servants? That's for you. And the politician's puzzled. He says, I don't understand. How is it that the holy man of God, I like to say that part rather slowly, the holy man of God gets a room with a cot and a chair and a table, and, and I get this mansion. And St. Peter said, you have to understand, it's not often that we get politicians in heaven. This is a rarity. No, it's okay. I'll give you some time to just kind of <laughs> let that ferment. I know you want to laugh. It's okay. So we're looking at the questions of Jesus, and today's big question is, do you want to be made well? And the reading is from Ezekiel chapter 37. Father, I ask that you would give me your thoughts and your words and that, Lord, that your kingdom would be present in our midst. And that whatever it is that you want to do this morning, that you would do that, Lord. Lord, so your kingdom come in this place here and now. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. 
Now, in the spirit of the Lord, think about um, Peter, uh, sorry, Paul being brought up to the seventh heaven in the spirit. Think about the apostle John, um, where he received revelations being in the spirit. These are encounters with God where God takes people into a spiritual place, not a physical place, but into a spiritual place. We can call these encounters with God, probably better said, visions of God, visions of the Lord, visions with the Lord. Here Ezekiel is in the spirit of the Lord. Set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Can you say that with me? Full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. Can you say that with me? They were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Now, if you want to see what these bones are all about, look at verse 11. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed, they meaning the house of Israel, they indeed say our bones are dry. Our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off. What these bones represent is Israel is now in exile, the exile to Babylon. Their days of glory, the kingdom of David, the kingdom of Solomon, the glory days are past, and they are a people without a nation. And they've been, they've been exiled at least 10 years at this point. And they have grown tired of hoping. They have lost all hope. Their hope, is, it, their hope uh, is represented by bones that are not only bones, but they're very dry bones. In fact, it, 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 what, it's, what it's saying is that their hope is, is, is far gone. That if you could attach hope to a body, that body has decayed a long time ago. It's now bones, and they're very, very dry bones. They've utterly lost their hope to the point that they say we ourselves are cut off. Cut off from who? Cut off from God. They've actually found themselves in a place where they no longer have faith in God's promises. Our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. Jesus asked, do you want to be made well? That's our reoccurring question this morning. Do you want to be made well? Let's go back to Ezekiel, verse 3. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? That's a question, isn't it? Does God know the beginning from the end? Absolutely. Does God know the answer to that very question? Of course he does. But it's amazing how God includes you and I in the work of the kingdom of God. God can do whatever he wants to do. He can snap a finger. And what we're about to see, he could have done himself. But instead, he wants to include the prophet Ezekiel. And he does that by asking him a question. Son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel says, so I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. And another translation says, you alone know. That is a very, very faithless answer. He's demonstrating how, God, I don't know anymore. He's demonstrating this hope of this hopelessness. He's demonstrating this, this, this lack of faith. Lord, I don't know anymore. You alone know. God only knows, is another way of saying it. And again, he, God, said to me, prophesy. Now, you'll see as we read this, he says, prophesy again and again and again. And I ask you this morning, do you want to be made 
well. And here is the following question. What action is connected to what you want and you believe God wants to do in your life? He said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you, and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. My goodness, these are, these are powerful words of faith, as if God was saying it, but God is not saying it. Ezekiel is saying it, who is part of this group of people who have lost all hope, as if the bones are not only there, that, the, that the, the sinew and the skin is decayed, and now it's bones, and it's very dry bones, and this person who's part of this hopelessness is prophesying these words. Very important. Verse 7, Ezekiel says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I, now if you don't have that underlined in your Bible, underline that. Because it says, as I have prophesied. As I had prophesied. You see, the, the, the Lord is asking us this morning, do you want to be made well? And what is the action that must be connected to the healing. In this case, it's prophecy. In this case, Ezekiel, the actioner, is speaking the words of God. The actioner is speaking the intentions of God. Even though he may come from a people who have lost all hope, as if they are bones that are very dry, he is speaking the intentions of God. That is the action. Let me put it this way. If Ezekiel was to say, I'm not saying it. I know, God, that you're telling me to say your intentions over these bones, but I'm not saying it. I think the story would be completely different. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. There was a sudden rattling. Oh, underline that. Be excited about that, dear ones. Things begin to change as we speak over ourselves and over our situations, the intention of God. You see, that's why I love this song, I Speak Jesus. Can I be honest with you? I think that you and I fall prey to be a, a, being able to speak the intentions of Satan over ourselves and to ourselves more than we speak the intentions of God over ourselves and to ourselves. Well, my goodness, I'm such a failure. I'll never amount to nothing. There I go again. Oh, my hope is, you know, uh, it's good enough just to God take care of me, Lord. We, we've lost the vision for what we can do in the kingdom of God. Dear ones, we are not born again so that we can live a moral life according to this world's standard. No, 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 no. We are born again so that we would follow Jesus in doing works of the kingdom of God. In other words, through our lives, God gets what God wants. That's why he saved us. Now, how many of us myself included, are prophesying God's intentions along those lines. Well, I think I made my point. I love that. Suddenly there was a rattling. There was a rattling. Things began to change. Things began to happen. Why? Because he prophesied over Israel. He prophesied the intentions of God. You know, David prophesied over us today. Don't think prophecy is just telling the future. Prophecy is speaking forth the heart of God. And that's what David did. God bless you. We're not of this world, dear ones. We're supposed to be living according to what God wants, right? Right? Be ye holy as God is holy. Be ye different as God is different. Go after the things that only God can do. God can change a life. 
God can empower a person. God can give peace. God can give joy. God can give purpose. God can make you bold to do the things of God. God can cause you to walk up to someone and say, in Jesus' name, be healed. Have you ever read the prayers of Jesus? They're awfully bold. He didn't pray prayers that said, God, if, if it be your will, would you touch and heal? Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad prayer. But all I'm saying is, if we are to be disciples of Jesus, then we should live the life of Jesus in thought, word, and deed. And if we're not sure that God wants to heal someone, because it seems that sometimes God has a different thing to do, that maybe we ought to stop praying and get with God and say, God, what do you want to do here? Because it may not be healing. It might be something else. It may not be bodily healing. It might be confronting sin. It may not be bodily healing. It might be a word from God that you've got to get this thing fixed in your life, and then you'll see God begin to open up. Who knows? But if our prayers are, God, your will be done, what I'm saying to you is before you pray that prayer, get with God and say, God, what do you want to do here? And then pray in faith. And then pray in faith. I mean, Jesus had some pretty radical prayers. Stand up and walk. Authority. Jesus' prayers were prayers of authority. Guess what? God has given you and I authority in Jesus' name to do the works of the kingdom. And so rather than us praying, God, your will be done, it sounds very sweet, and it even sounds a little holy. But if we're not careful, we're missing the mark because God wants to speak to us about what it is he wants to do. And then we began to speak in authority with timidity. Sure. With meekness, with humility. Absolutely. You can even say, you know, I think that the Lord wants to do something here. And I'm just wondering if God well, shoot. I feel like God is telling me that. That you need to go home and ask forgiveness of your wife. I, I, know that, I know that you're sick, and, 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 and my goodness, you're coughing all over me, and I'm wondering if I'm going to get your sickness. But, but rather than pray about that, I, I'm wondering if God is saying, it's time for you to go back home and, 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 and say sorry to your wife. Or maybe it's, it's time for you to, to go home and, and have a conversation with the kids and, and let them know that what they think matters, too. Or, or maybe it's time for you to get a job because you've been living off your wife too long and it's time for you to step up. I mean, God is in all of this. And if we pray these prayers, God, your will be done. My dear ones, we are missing it. Now, can we pray your kingdom come, your will be done? Absolutely. But if all of our prayers sound like that, I think it's time to get with Jesus and say, Lord, what have you given me authority to say here? Am I beating this to death? If I am, I'll move on. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, really good. <laughs> oh, it's not even part of my sermon, but, but I am struck with the prayers of Jesus, and I am struck with us being his disciples. And Jesus did everything intentionally so that the disciples would then learn who he is, how he ministers, what he does, and do that. And we see it in the book of Acts. We see people talking like Jesus. We see them doing the works of Jesus to the point that it said they've been with Jesus because they're talking like him, because they're praying like him, because they're doing ministry like him. God, help me. Okay, where are we? Rattling, rattling, rattling. Verse 8. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Just a quick thought here. Are there people who have skin and sinew and they look like they're healthy, but there's no breath in them? We're talking about the breath of God. Now think here of Adam and Eve, God breathing into them. Think here of, of Jesus saying to people who were breathing, the apostles, it said he breathed. breathed the Holy Spirit on them. There is a breath, and there is a breath. There is a breath of the flesh, a carnal breath. We're surviving, we're breathing. 
Ah, everything's working in my body. And then there is the breath of God. There is the breath of God that comes with faith and comes with passion and comes with calling because the breath of God is all about doing the things of God. Right? The breath of God. Verse 9. Also he said to me, prophesy. That's the fourth time this is said here. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, fifth time, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. It's amazing to me. Here is Ezekiel, who's part of, uh, of Israel, who have lost hope and think they're cut off, and he's prophesying again and again and again. And I can't help that I can't help but think that as he's prophesying, he's beginning to believe this, and he's beginning to experience this, this flow of God, and it's getting, it's getting rather exciting for him. Come from the four winds, O breath, breathe on these slain that they may live, verse 10. So I prophesied as, I was, as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones, as I read, are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. So in context, he's speaking to the nation of Israel that some, at some point they will be released from exile and once again establish their own sovereignty, their own nation, and they will again realize that they're not cut off. But I think that God is speaking to us in this as well, to the church. Verse 12, therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. Oh, dear ones, if you don't have that one underlined, underline it. That is what we live for. We live for the glory of God. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. I will place you in your land and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Now turn to John chapter 5. I love this story. I love this question. This is a question for the journey. Questions for the journey. Let's see. Jesus asked, I think we started off with Jesus asking, what do you want? I think that's a re repeating question that God asks us. What do you want? What are you living for? What is it that you truly desire? What do you want? You had another question was, Jesus said, I know, uh, Jesus says, um, who do people say that I am? But then he turned to the disciples and he said, who do you say that I am? That's a question for the journey. Lord, am I, am I living a life that, that reflects that I say that you're the Lord? Am I living a life that reflects that I say that you are God? Right? Jesus is saying, right? I know what people say about me, but what do you say about me, Eddie? What do you say about me? Well, you know, I'm just kind of stressed out. I mean, the bills aren't being paid. You know, every time I come home, the Amazon truck is at the house and I need, to, I need to find an Amazon support group for my wife. You know, my, 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 kids, my kids aren't quite cooperating with you. And, and, you know, and by the way, my sciatic nerve is a pain in the you-know-what. And I've got all kinds of problems, Lord. And the Lord says, who do you say that I am? You see, this is the spirit of these questions. These questions serve for us to do some self-evaluation. Because God wants to conform us into the image of his son, 
Jesus, who only did what he saw the Father doing. Jesus, who was the epitome of obedience. Believe it or not, God is wanting you and I to be conformed to who Jesus is in obedience. Every now and again, he'll ask us, who do you say that I am, Eddie? Because you're complaining a whole bunch. Who do you say that I am, Eddie? Because you're pretty worried about your money. Who do you say that I am, Eddie? Because, you know, you're really having some issues with people. And um, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am, Eddie? Because you're complaining to whoever would listen about your sciatic nerve. Who do you say that I am? Am I Lord? Am I God? Am I Jehovah Jireh, your provider? Who do you say that I am? These are questions for the journey, and they're meant for us to have a conversation with Jesus and do some self-evaluation. Okay, here's a great question. Chapter 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. We don't know what feast it was. Could have been, it could have been uh, Passover. And Jesus went up to, Jeru to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Behezda, having five porches. Um, this pool is actually, Behezda is actually translated place of outpouring or house of grace even. Either one would apply there. Verse 3. In these, these porches, lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Sorry, water. That word water. It's so New Yorkese. Water. Waiting for the moving of the water. Waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Certain time. We don't know what that means. Was it daily? Was it weekly? Was it monthly? Was it, was it on a schedule or was it just periodic? We don't know. This whole thing is rather strange. For an angel went down at a certain time to this place of outpouring, this house of grace, where there were many, many, many people sick, at a certain time, into the pool, and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. It kind of sounds like ready, set, go. And they're off. In this mad dash, the first person in gets healed. Yeehaw! It is the strangest story. But there it is. Verse 5. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Now this word infirmity is helpful for us because it's the same word from which we get, we get um, the word weakness. Weakness. So it's not just physical, but it's wherever we feel weak, wherever we're struggling, and we need help. In this case, it was physical. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Can you say that with me? 38 years. Talk about hopeless. My goodness, talk about bones, dry bones. 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there in that condition a long time, Jesus said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? What? What? I have been laying here for 38 years. You want to see my bed sores? What do you want to be made well? This has got to be in the natural the bonehead of all questions. 
It is so absolutely obvious on its surface. But how many know that Jesus never did anything that could be considered boneheaded? Jesus is after something here. He's after something here. And this guy who has been here for 38 years, 38 years. Gosh, I'd imagine he'd be like the Israelites who said, all hope is gone. God has forgotten me a long time ago. 38 years, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. 38 years, do you want to be made well? That's almost an insult. The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. I mean, if this is stirring, if this stirring is happening, I don't know, once a month for 38 years, do the math. At that point, I could imagine this guy saying, why bother? Why bother? But on the other hand, I can't leave because this is a place of hope. And this is a place where somebody gets healed, where something's happening. Why bother? And Jesus came for this one. See, there's a multitude. There are many that are sick here. Does God heal everybody all the time? Well, no. Apparently not. But, but don't let that change your willingness to pray for healing, right? Okay. 38 years. He calls Jesus, what does he call Jesus? Sir. He has no idea who Jesus is. He has no idea, and we'll see that in a minute. He has no idea who Jesus is. This guy is not getting the news. He's not getting the newspaper. He's not hearing people talking in the streets. He has no idea who this Jesus is. In fact, later on in the story, the Pharisees will ask him, who did this? And Jesus, he's, the guy says, I don't know. I don't know who he is. And Jesus comes back to him later and says, go and sin no more. This guy has no idea who Jesus is. The sick man answered, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Do you want to be made well? What is the action that's connected to the miracle? What is the action that is connected to what God is doing? Actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. Who do you say that I am? What is the action that's connected to the miracle? Let me ask you a question. What is it that you want God to heal in your life? Is there a sin, a reoccurring sin? What is the action that is connected to the healing? In this case, the action is he got up and walked. He could have laid down and said, a, a, a nice guy, whoever you are, um, I've been here for 38 years and uh, I, I, I'd rather not hope. Hope hurts. I'd rather just settle into this and just accept this. But his action is rise up and walk. And guess what he did? He rose up and walked. Had he not risen and walked, I think it would have been a different story. So what is the action that's connected to the intention of God for you? Let me ask it a different way. What is it that you want God to do in your life? You've been praying You've been asking, God, would you do this? And God may be saying yes. But what is the action that is required to experience the work of God? 
Is there a sin in your life that is reoccurring? What's the action? Is there a relationship that you know is not quite right? What's the action that's connected to the healing? Is there an anxiety that you have in your life? Okay, and you feel like the Lord wants to address that anxiety. What is the action that's connected to the healing? You see, James does a great job with this, doesn't he? Faith without works is what? Dead. For Ezekiel, the action was prophesying the intentions of God. Are we prophesying over ourselves? Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget not his benefits. Are we prophesying over ourselves? Are we speaking the intentions of God over ourselves? Are we better at prophesying the words of the enemy over ourselves than the intentions of God? God has called you chosen. God has said, you are my own. God has sent you. God has anointed you. God has said that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That is your heritage. These are the words of God. God has said, I hear your prayer. But dear ones, if all that we're doing is saying, yes, Lord, and we're not recognizing that there must be an action to the healing. You see, God can fix our lives all day long with a stroke of his hand. And I suppose he does that. But what I see in scripture is God is asking us some questions. And he's asking us to do some self-evaluation. And he's asking us, are you really ready to be made well? In this case, guess what, man who's been there 38 years? If you're made well, everything changes. Because now, rather than you being on the receiving end, because, you know, the local synagogue youth group comes and they bring food, you know, and the woman's ministry from the synagogue comes and they bring clothing, you know, and the men's ministry from the synagogue, right? You're on the receiving end, right? Somebody's feeding this guy. And Jesus is saying, you realize that when you're healed, everything changes. And now, no longer are you on the receiving end, but now it's time to give. And now it's time to serve. And now it's time to carry the message of God to others. I'm a big baby. When I hurt myself, I whine, oh, my finger, my hip, my, I hit my finger with a hammer. Laura, look what I did. Look, I love the attention. And the Lord says, Eddie, do you want to be made well? There are people who stay in their sickbed because that's the only way that they can matter to someone else. And the Lord says, do you want to be made well? There are people who have given up on freeing themselves from sin. And Jesus is asking, do you want to be made well? There are relationships that we've allowed to remain something less than full of grace. And the Lord is saying, do you want to be made well? What's the action that he's calling us to do? Do you know how you know that you're listening to the prophecy of Satan over your life? You think about others in an unloving way. Period. Guess what, everybody? God don't love you and me no more and no less than he loves the the drunk in the street who's sleeping on someone's front lawn and making a mess of it. God is love. Period. No more. Speak the intentions of God over us. Worship team, come on up. That's the question for today, everyone. What is it that you want Jesus to heal in your life? 
And what is the action that's connected to that? Is it simply prophesying over yourself? That's important. Is it rising up off your bed? What is the action? At the end of the day, the action explains our level of faith. Let's be honest with ourselves. Right? Let's be honest with ourselves. Lord, I think I kind of love, I love my sin a little more than I love you in this area. Let's be honest with ourselves. Right? You know, people who struggle with addiction, they can actually, while they're doing the addiction, they could be praying to Jesus. I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I think that at some point we have to say, Lord, I think I love my addiction a little more than I love you. And I hate that about me, Lord. And I know you hate that about me too. Lord Jesus, free me. Holy Spirit, free me. I want to love you more than anything else in the world. Amen? Amen. Did I preach to you this morning? Yes, I did. Yeah? Is the Lord speaking to you? He's speaking to me. Do you want to be made well? Okay, Lord, I want you to fix this in my life. What do I need to do, God? Lord, I want to be made well. What do I need to do here, Lord? Show me, Lord. I'm all in. Why don't we stand and worship the Lord?
So I'm about to dismiss you, but um, there are um, two or three that are here that have a, as soon as I said relationship, that does not have the grace of God, um, you thought of a specific person. And the Lord wants to heal that relationship or begin the work of healing in that relationship, but but the action that is connected to the work of God, right? The prophesying or this, the rise up and walk part. And by the way, this, these relationships, the 38 years and the hopelessness and it's never going to change kind of mentality is part of this relationship. And the action is picking up the phone and making a call. There, there are also those who have physical maladies. I think there's more of us that have this than the relationship piece. Physical maladies, and we've accepted it and said, you know what, nothing's going to change. It's been going on for a long time. And the Lord is saying, today's your day. Right? Today's your day. And so I, I want all of you who, who I'm talking to to come up and let us minister to you as we dismiss. Here's another thing. If you have become comfortable with seeing others with a critical eye, what you have done is you have sewn up the veil and you are not allowing the light and the grace of Jesus to come into your life. And it will kill you spiritually. If that's you, I want you to come as well. Okay, the worship team is going to continue to play. If you want to respond to any of those words, come and the elders are here and we'll lay hands on you and invite the Holy Spirit to do whatever it is that God wants to do. So, so come up even now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace upon our lives. And Lord, we ask that you would um, continue to speak to us as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, God bless you. We'll see you up in the fellowship hall. If any of those words are for you, come and we want to pray over you. Elders, if you can stay and just lay hands on these folks as, as they're here seeking the Lord, worship team will continue to play. We worship you, Lord. So we invite you to come. Lord, you're speaking.